Help us understand what's happening. We keep talking about what's happening in the economy and whether a recession is, is in the offing. But that all relates, I think, potentially to whether people are going to return to office and how people are working these days. Are That's you seeing a shift? Uh, yeah, uh, we are seeing a shift. There's, there's definitely more people returning, but it is a minority still. If you look around the world, we did a, um, a future forum, an organization that we helped get off the ground, did a survey of 10,000 workers. 66% are still working, um, at least part of the time, from home. And I don't see that really shifting. So you don't believe that, I mean, there is a view that if, if we move into a recession, as the economy gets tougher, mm -hmm. actually more people move back into the office, proxim you know, proximity to power, you yep. want to be seen, FaceTime, all of that. You don't think that that's, uh, that, that comes factor. back in a, in, a, in a moment where people start to worry about their jobs a bit more? Yeah, I mean, I think if you have an employer where that's a, a, a threat or a little bit of a stick, um, that could definitely happen. But I think for most large organizations, it never really mattered whether you were there because you know, there's 150 offices around the world and inside one of the large campuses, there's four buildings and on each building there's right. 10 floors. And What are you seeing and hearing from customers? This is now, you've been, it, the, it's been about a year since the, the transaction with Salesforce. Yep. In terms of uptake for, for Slack services and just more broadly, mm -hmm. um, companies making new contracts for Slack or more broadly with Salesforce. Are you, are you seeing any kind of hesitation given, given what's happening in the marketplace? So many other big tech companies, even small tech companies, are, hold, are pushing back in terms of uh, labor, workforce, et cetera. I think there's, a, there's sometimes a few more like procedural um, hurdles to clear. The demand is still there, though. And I think, you know, going back to the last question as well, here's a little thought experiment. Imagine it's... March 2020, and we're in some parallel universe, and you could continue to go to the office and commute and go to business dinners and use conference rooms and all that stuff, but you took away all the software, every organization would just like disintegrate in 24 hours. So there is this shift that happened sometime in the last couple of decades between the, like, the relative importance right. of the physical HQ and the digital HQ, and yes, using digital well, What do you think happens to the whole sort of startup community culture? There's a lot of companies out there that have been running for growth mm -hmm. uh, without profits, and I think there's a real worry over the next year that some of them are going to run out of capital and capital may not be available to them, and I imagine some of them are customers of yours. That's true, but we have 200,000 customers around the world, you know, and, and some of those are the biggest organizations in the world. Some of them are small, and there's, there's a pretty uh, diversified right. pool of, of Slack customers. But I take your point. Right. The other, the flip side of that, though, is the company that ended up becoming Slack was founded in March of 2009 um, with a cohort of companies, and, you know, like Airbnb. So you think this is one of those moments? I think, well, look at it from the perspective of one of those founders. There's definitely many that might... Um, might be able to get the funding. But for the one who does, there's a lot less right. unnecessary or stupid or wasteful competition because it's not like there's 50 companies that all got $50 million and now you got to kind of have this war of attrition until a couple. Right. Okay, I have a very practical question to ask. I, we're here at this conference. Yeah. And, you know, it used to be a couple years ago, up until a couple years ago, you know, you meet people, they give you a business card or have an email address on or they give you their email and say, send me a note, right? Mm -hmm. Now, everybody, sometimes they'll even say, give me your phone. And they type in their, their cell phone number, not to call you, but to text you. Everybody wants to text you instead now. That's the, that's the new, next. And I don't know if that's about the intimacy of text over email, but invariably then they text you and then they want to, you know, then you're trying to schedule something. That's not really built for, for this either. So, and nobody has a unified sort of inbox. So now you're living with email, you're living with Slack, you're living with text messages. It might be WhatsApp. Is there a solution to this? Because it almost feels like we have gone backwards, oddly enough. I think longer term, there's, there's almost certainly a solution because people tend to work stuff out. You remember that movie, You Got Mail? Yep. Like, the whole premise is there were some times that you didn't have mail, right? Like, like mail was something that only occasionally happened, whereas anytime you open your, your inbox, there's hundreds and hundreds of messages. And it's this weird mixed bag of, like, here's a receipt for your Uber ride, right. and, and here's a newsletter, here's a marketing pitch, here's some unsolicited spam, here's a wedding invitation, here's an important document for work. And that becomes a little bit overwhelming. But if you zoom out, it's just all this communication became very cheap. And it's, it's a little bit like... Um, no one complains that it's too easy to, to travel now, whereas, have you ever been to, driven across Utah? So you, like, I just can't imagine what it would be like to go pioneer speed across that thing. So you want to create friction for email or, um, for, or for communication? I think what we need to do is find better ways to uh, cope in a world of abundance. But now people, now people send you a text message when they send you, they, they send you an email and then they'll send you a text message saying, 
hey, just FYI, I sent you an email. Yeah, that that's makes no sense. It it is it does make no sense. And uh, there's all kinds of funny stories about like the 1910s, 1920s applications of, of telephony where people are doing, from our perspective now, right. silly and annoying things. But I just feel confident that uh, as a species, we'll we'll work this stuff. Let me ask you a separate question. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.